All right, welcome. Please use the chat to type your name, your pronouns, where you're located, how you found us or what you hope to get from this evening. And don't worry, I know that was a lot. So we're gonna put that in the chat actually. Um, this evening's event is being recorded and will be accessible on our website for future viewing. Our website will also be in the chat. Thank you, Davide. Um, Zoom, Zoom's live transcription is enabled, so you can choose that down below if it would help you. And if there's anything else we can do to facilitate access for you, please email us at artistscommit at gmail.com. We'll also put that in the chat. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that I, like many of this evening's presenters, I'm speaking to you from the unceded ancestral territory of peoples who lived here for time immemorial, primarily the Lenape. Artists Commit recognizes the connections between the historical and ongoing forest removal, attempted erasure, and genocide of the original peoples and the climate crisis we face today. We honor the indigenous caretakers of these lands and waters, both the elders of the past, as well as the present and future generations to come. My name is Jessica Gass. I'm an artist, activist, elected official, and member of Artists Commit. I am located in Philadelphia, the home territory of the Lenny Lenape people. Now I'm gonna pass you on to Davide Balula, my co-host. Davide is a French Portuguese artist and a founding member of Artists Commit. Hi, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jessica. Um, thank you also for reminding us that uh, indigenous peoples are very much our contemporaries, uh, not just a culture from the past. I'm myself currently speaking from the traditional territory of the Shinnecock Indian Nation. I'm speaking through Zoom like many people here, and I would like also like to remind us that uh, when we use the, the words like cloud and virtual space, we often forget about the about the land uh, behind it and the history and methods of extraction and, and displacement. Uh, thank you for taking the time uh, to, for this uh, acknowledgement uh, with us. On behalf of Artists Commit, we would like to welcome everyone. Thank you for joining this call. Uh, Jessica and I will be your hosts tonight. We will try to keep track of time and make sure that everything goes well. So please bear with us. Uh, also, if you have not done so already, you can support us by adding your name to our pledge and sign up to our newsletter. You'll have the link in the chat, I believe. Uh, and you can also follow us on Instagram. Uh, but maybe you are, you, are, you are already. Quick word about Artist Commit before we dive into the climate impact report. That what uh, brings us tonight here. Uh, Jessica, do you want to maybe present the Artist Commit briefly? Sure. Thank you, Davide. Artist Commit emerged in 2021 as a sister to the Amorphous Collective Galleries Commit. Both were born of the climate emergency and its intersectional racial, economic, and other labor and other structural injustices that require immediate and collective action. We seek to unite climate conscious action with information sharing and speaking out making conversations and considerations of our impact on the planet and on one another's standard within our studios and when engaging with colleagues, collaborators, vendors, clients, and institutions with whom we partner. So far, climate impact reports, what bring us together tonight, have been our favorite way to do so. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Jessica. I, I assume that everyone here uh, is looking for ways to take action. Uh, many of us just don't really know where to start. So if that's your case, I think you've come to the right place. It's here. Welcome again, everybody. People keep coming in. Um, we are just starting still. So everyone, we've not missed too, too much. Uh, like Jessica said, I think you'll find that uh, making a climate impact report yourself or with your team is a great way to initiate 
climate related conversations and include your collaborators along the way. Uh, you'll see that it can infiltrate every step from budget planning, hiring people, every common topics uh, while making a project uh, from beginning to end. Also, I think you'll find after this uh, meeting today that uh, making a report is way less intimidating than it sounds. Our template will essentially help you identify the different areas that could use some mitigation. You'll be able to spot the areas that you have uh, control over, things you can change. Uh, you'll find it rewarding, I believe. You, it will make you strong, confident. You'll feel more comfortable to be transparent, which is really something we encourage here with the artist commit. Uh, and hopefully your transparency will inspire others too. A big plus also that we find with those uh, climate impact reports, I think it's maybe to me like the most, uh, one of the most important thing is that you'll be able to use it to draft your own guidelines and like your own policy like for your own organization, really specifically tailored for you and your use. Uh, so I think that's um, that's super useful. Uh, I would also like to add that uh, you can always reach us anytime. I mean, right now in the chat with your questions, uh, but also through email, we're pretty uh, available. Hopefully we can help you, or if we can't, we can connect you with somebody who hopefully will be able to, um, okay. So let's go, let's get started. If still people are joining, which is great. Thank you, uh, thank you new uh, participants to viewers from everywhere on the agenda today. So uh, quick, um, yeah, agenda. So we'll have a walkthrough pretty thorough by uh, Laura Lepton. Uh, she's a pro at making those reports. So I think like after the walkthrough, you'll feel super comfortable. I think you'll feel like you've made some yourselves already. Uh, after after the walkthrough and step-by-step -step guide by Laura, then you will have some um, case studies, some first-hand experiences. And we'll start with artist Alison Janae Hamilton on our show at Marion Bosky Gallery. And then we'll have, uh, we were supposed to have Haley Mellon, uh, but she's unfortunately feeling a little uh, under the weather, but uh, Laura will, um, will, will just present the climate report uh, that she, that Haley has prepared for a, uh, Pipilotirist on a show at uh, Mokaele. Uh, then we'll have Robin F. Williams uh, on her painting show at PPOW Gallery in New York, uh, followed by Devil Cohen on his show at the non nonprofit organization PS122 Gallery in New York. And then we'll end with a video from a Tate curator, Carly Whitefield, on the Tate Modern Hyundai, uh, Hyundai Commission uh, by Annika Yi. Uh, we'll have some uh, time at the end for a short Q&A, so please share your question in the chat as we go, and specifically at the end, so we make sure we don't miss them. Uh, let's get started. Uh, I think Laura has a poll uh, for us. Uh, if maybe it's up already, uh, but she'll start with that walkthrough, step-by-step -step guide, Laura. Uh, Laura, yeah. if, if you can jump in. Uh um, thank you, Justin Davide, um, for that great intro. Uh, as Davide, Davide has said, I am Laura Lupton. Um, I am based in New York, which is the unceded land of the Lensi Lenape and Canarsie people. Um, I'm a gallery worker. I'm a co-founder of Galleries Commit and Artists Commit, um, as well as some other climate-based initiatives. Um, I, to start, I want to get a sense of who is actually here in this meeting. So. Um, I see, yeah, there's this poll up asking some questions and I see several of you have already responded, um, but maybe I'll give you just another second if you haven't answered these questions and I'm going, okay, I'm gonna share these out so other people can see. Um, it looks like we have several artists on the call. Most of you are artists. Um, a lot of you are interested in climate impact reports, but you don't have a specific project in mind yet. Some of you are here for the free snacks and there are none. So I hope that you stay on anyways. Um, and okay, we have like kind of a mix of people who actually don't know much about galleries commit, artists commit, and those that have already signed on. Um, okay, that is great. Um, I am going to talk a little bit about Artists Commit and the Climate Impact Report to give an overview and then try to do like a rundown um, to actually talk about how to do it so you can kick this off on your own. Um, Artists Commit really started in 2020, 
2020 after we had started Galleries Commit with this question of how can artists catalyze change? We, with Galleries Commit, we could see how strong the impact of an artist signing on to the Galleries Commit initiative could be for their gallery to also sign. And simultaneously, we started seeing galleries take action based on single artist exhibitions. And they were choosing to do this with artists that they knew shared an interest in climate action. Not necessarily climate themed work, but artists that they knew would be excited to find ways to make their actual exhibitions and production more climate conscious. So this proved to be a really great space to experiment, to practice conversations, and to learn more about what does work and doesn't work for a specific gallery or artist needs. Um, so up on the screen are a couple of the galleries and artists that took action with Galleries Commit in 2021 that kind of led to this initiative. All of that led us to thinking about how to leverage an artist exhibition as a catalyst for a presenting partner and artists to engage in a dialogue about the climate impact of their exhibition. Um, and this eventually evolved into the climate impact reports that we launched last fall. The first batch of reports were all artists that had been um, really involved in artist commit from the beginning. They reflect a range of both spaces and artistic practices. Some of these were artist initiated, others were space initiated. They focused on different areas of the project in varying depth um, based on both the capacity and the interests of the project team that was working on. However, a common thread for all of these is that they were dialogue driven and deeply, deeply collaborative. Working on them in tandem was great um, because we were all able to support each other with questions, help build templates together and share lessons about what was working or how we were approaching different areas of the report. Um, the group of us, we all de eventually decided to use a similar template and how we approach them. And you'll see that reflected in the reports that are on the website so far. Um, but this template isn't necessarily something that is meant to be didactic or that you have to follow. It can be responsive to what people working on a report are most interested in doing. Um, the process of producing, uh, switching back to this page, um, the process of producing reports is mainly really intended to provide a framework for a dialogue and to promote a practice of transparency and information sharing, uh, both within the project team itself, as well as sharing with the art sector at large. A report can be entirely artist generated. It can fit into broader existing climate initiatives that an institution may be doing, um, or it can serve as a kind of like a testing ground for some of the actions that a space or an artist are thinking about exploring. Um, they want a space to experiment to see what works on a smaller scale. So the climate impact reports are really designed to allow for flexibility and to adapt to each project needs. Um, that said, ideally a report does address four core action areas cutting emissions, eliminating waste, supporting people, and promoting collective action. For anyone that's familiar with Galleries Commit, you'll recognize these as the same four core action areas from the Gallery Climate Action Plan. So the full plan and the Climate Impact Report complement each other really well um, because you can use the exhibition model to become familiar with the action areas, to start conversations with your team, and to explore which actions are relevant, attainable, or inspiring for your team. And ideally, that can then lead to more ambitious, um, a more complete climate action plan that can be attributed more holistically across the gallery or institution or the artist studio down the line. Um, you can also find, I, I'm going to go through a lot of information today, so I just want to know, you to know that you can also find this info on our website at artistcommit.com slash reports. There's a how-to page, and we will also have this presentation available there after this with a recording um, and maybe even a link to the slides so you can follow through that way. Um, that said, I'm going to go through and try to do as much as I can to get through this in a somewhat quick, quick way. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Um, what's part of a climate impact report cut emissions from existing reports and projects we already know some of the most common high carbon emission areas um, and those are really often depending on the project and depending on what your exact exhibition is um, they're ending up being project travel especially flights artwork shipping um, again especially air freight energy use, um, this can be building energy, and the Climate Impact Report is actually a great opportunity for the presenting partner um, to learn about their building's carbon emissions. That's often, um, for any of us, our actual physical spaces are one of our biggest areas of emissions. 
Um, but if you're working on a climate impact report and you don't necessarily have access to the building's records, um, understanding the energy use of the project itself is also a really effective and important tool for this. So things like AV equipment you might be using, web-based components, or energy intensive fabrication methods like uh, bronze casting could go into these high carbon emission areas. Um, once you've calculated those and you realize that it's actually super simple to use these calculators and understand emissions, you may want to consider other things and some other areas, again, depending on kind of the scale and scope of your project um, that you might want to consider are visitor travel, so things like tracking the zip codes of visitor origin points, food consumed, especially if you're throwing events, and especially if those events have meat um, or things like imported wine at them. Uh, so you can do this to bring in staff travel um, to understand what's going on with the institution, supply orders, material shipping. One thing I'll say for this is that um, through a couple of the reports we've done so far is we've really understood that the most effective way to spend your time is to just minimize and consolidate supply orders rather than going down the rabbit hole of tracking a bunch of individual small off shipments. Um, once you have a sense of the areas that you want to calculate, then um, how to do this. We have a guide for this on the website. So if you go to the How To Climate Impact Report page, um, there's a link for a kind of PDF of a ton of great tips and all these resources are there. Um, but we have three methods for calculating carbon emissions that are recommended in that guide. One, use the Gallery Climate Coalition carbon calculator. Uh, this is great, it's simple to use, it's free, and it contributes to shared efforts by the visual arts sector. You can also contact us for an Excel-based spreadsheet calculator that is maintained by art to acres This is also free. Um, you can control and save your data internally on your own spreadsheet. Uh, that means you can also keep it on file to compare individual exhibitions or annual emissions. Um, and a perk of this is that you actually get pro bono support from art to acres if it means that it results in a donation to our Galleries Commit art to acres Land Conservation Project. You can also hire a consultant for a third party verified carbon audit. Um, this is a great route to go if you have the resources for it. It's definitely the most thorough way to make sure that emissions are accounted for. Um, and some galleries have used a carbon accounting company. Again, you can actually receive a discount if you use them and it results in a donation to the Galleries Commit Art Acres and Conservation Project. Um, and David's Werner Gallery used Atelier 10 that did a really comprehensive and visually great um, report for their Harold Ankar exhibition. There are other calculators out there, Julie's Bicycle, the EPA, the Berkeley Cool Climate Calculator. These are all simple tools to use. Um, they're great for basic electricity and travel emissions. Some of the others that we recommend have um, some like art specific and exhibition specific sections. Um, but if you're just doing electricity and travel, then pretty much any calculator, calculator you can find is going to work well for that. Since all of the reports that we've done so far have used the Gallery Climate Coalition Carbon Calculator, I just have a screenshot up here um, to kind of familiarize yourself with what it's going to look like when you go to that page. Um, so these are the three areas that we really recommend that you make sure that you're tracking any flights, any air freight, and building energy. Um, so you would just type in origin destination, the um, class, how many people have flew, if it was a return trip. For air freight, you add the weight for that. Um, if you are working with an art shipper, then the weight will be on the invoice of your shipment almost always. If it's not on your invoice, then you can always contact your art shipper and ask. If you're not working with an art shipper, um, you can es estimate the weight by either weighing it yourself or getting a sense of it through um, like the product order form or something like that. For building energy, um, you can pull kilowatts per hour on, off of your Con Ed bill, or your national grid bill. Um, the example we have on the screen right now is from the Geffen, which is where the Piplati Rust Mocha exhibition was. And they pulled in their electricity use and their piped ga gas use from their um, utility bills. They said that the Piplati Rust exhibition was taking up about 45% of the total building. So they attributed 45% of that total carbon emissions to her project um, and then the rest of it to other areas of the museum. If you aren't doing building energy, but you're doing things like tracking wattage of equipment that you're using, then again, product tech sheets will have the wattage. Um, you can Google the conversion of wattage to kilowatts per hour, and then estimate that your exhibition is going to be open for 30 days for eight hours a day, um, and kind of do that calculation to get what those kilowatts per hour would be for electricity use. Of course, the point for carbon is to reduce it, not just to calculate it. Um, so I wanted to share a couple of ideas for reducing carbon in those three major areas. Um, one, 
opt for zero carbon options for travel, opt for trains over flights, avoid extraneous flights as much as possible. But when you are taking a flight, opt for direct routes, um, avoid first class and minimize luggage. For shipping, um, ask your vendor to, for zero or low carbon freight options. Even if they can't provide them to you, the more we start asking that question, the more there's a sense of demand and people expect um, that they need to be providing that. Um, consolidated shuttles, better than exclusive trucks. Rail freight, better than trucks. Sea freight, better than air freight. Um, consolidate works, use reusable crates, reduce the weight of crates, and ask your insurance provider to cover sea freight. Um, again, the more that we ask that, the greater the demand is, and the more that becomes a standard practice that's provided. Um, and then for electricity, if you're at an institution, consider adopting the Bizelot Group Climate Standards. These are kind of relaxed climate control standards for loaned work so that you don't have to use quite as much energy intensive resources to keep a gallery freezing cold to protect the work. Still, conservators agree it's still super safe for the work, um, but just allows us to be a little bit more climate efficient and using green energy sources. A couple of artists have actually been able to introduce green energy like solar panels to an institution on the occasion of an exhibition that then stay there permanently and are available for the institution to use into the future. Um, that's great and a super great idea to be able to uh, slide in some long-term change to practices through an artist exhibition model. Um, okay, to eliminate waste, I just have a slide here. This is plan ahead. That's all it says. The number one way to eliminate waste is to plan ahead. Haste makes waste. We've heard that always. Um, plan ahead. It both eliminates preventable waste and it also gives yourself time um, to make a plan for the destination of waste that could have an afterlife if properly accounted for, um, but can sometimes just get dumped on the street because it's the last minute and you got to get things out of the space. For the climate impact report, when you do this, um, we're focusing on waste transparency. So it's looking at your own material and what happens to it and then being transparent about what is happening with it. So on the screen, I have an example of an upcoming report that we haven't posted yet for a Hauser and Worth exhibition that should be released next week. Um, and they categorized waste for their show with uh, reuse, repurpose, storage, refuse, recycle. So is it gonna be reused for the same purpose as the original use? Is it going to be repurposed um, to be kept or sold or donated, but used for something different in the future? Is it going to storage? We have a special category for storage because I think we all know that things end up going to storage facilities without a uh, intentional plan for long-term reuse. And they can sit there for decades, years and are absorbing infrastructure and energy use there. So being transparent if that's happening helps us plan ahead for it in better ways. Um, refuse is a great one that is tied to planning ahead. Um, you realize by planning ahead that it's actually not necessary and there's a more efficient way of, of addressing whatever that need was. We have um, a couple of resources. The idea for making a material afterlife plan, it actually came from the artist Madeline Hollander on one of the events that we hosted last year. She does it for all of her exhibitions. Um, we have a Google Sheet template that you can use. It's available on artistcommit.com. Um, this, in this version, you input all of your materials, track the destination, make notes. Additional sustainability concerns might be something like it's toxic waste or non-biodegradable or requires special disposal. Um, I actually, when I do this, I don't use the spreadsheet. I use my budget, my project budget. Um, so all the things that I'm ordering for a project, it has a cost associated with it. So I already have a spreadsheet that itemizes all those items. I translate that into a waste report, um, make a new column for where it's going after. And I use that directly um, based on the budget in Excel that I've already been working on. Um, at, Galleries Commit and Artists Commit, we have what's called a Climate Action Database. You can find that under resources um, on the site. I just have a screenshot of the Climate Action Database and some of the resources that are tagged with material on the screen. Um, go there, find support for how you can use, have like smart material use. I will go through a couple of these that we have that um, I think are particularly useful. Uh, Barter.art is a material reuse platform for the art world where you can post things like AV equipment, crates, pedestals, art supplies um, to pr promote circular material reuse within our sector. If you plan ahead, you can make these posts in advance and start like going ahead and trying to find future homes where other people in the art sector who might need similar material can reuse that for free. The Key Culture Waste and Material Keybook, I just have a screenshot of the table of contents so you can get a sense of some of the really great information that you can find from this peer review document that they've created about 
uh, alternatives for gloves or materials or packing materials. Um, great information there if you want to take a look. The sustainability, sustainability tools and cultural heritage carbon material calculator. Um, this is a super interesting tool that's still in development, but you can go there and say um, you're thinking about packing at work and you're wondering if it's um, the most carbon efficient to pack it, wrapping it in bubble wrap or ethafoam, which are often industry standards for us, but you're like, maybe I want to wrap it in fabric. Um, is that going to be better? And you can see um, cotton fabric or muslin, definitely better than bubble wrap and ethafoam. Nylon fabric, actually higher carbon emissions than ethafoam. So you can kind of directly um, compare different materials and make responsible decisions through this calculator. Um, what is part of a climate impact report is supporting people. Um, one of the main things I'm going to talk about for this is actually why is this a part of the climate impact report? Uh, Reports are created by people on your project team. The Getty Institute is actually doing some super interesting research on how individuals working on projects all share an interest in climate action, but one of the number one obstacles is not feeling support or permission to take action. So the first step is an acknowledgement that making a climate impact report is an appropriate way to spend work time. And the second step is to make sure that people are actually granted time and space to do that. If you say climate is a priority for your project, then you have to actually dedicate time and attention of your team to do it. Um, that's an obvious link, but for us, and I think the team behind Artists Artist Commit, it also goes further than that. We know that the climate crisis intersects with racial, economic, labor, and other forms of structural injustice in both its root causes and its direct effects. The data on that at this point is undeniable. And the mindset and the systems that overextend our team's resources are the same systems and the same mindsets that foster over extraction of our environment's resources. So cultivating a culture of caretaking instead of a culture of extraction is a necessary for the paradigm shift that we need to curb the climate crisis. And we can practice that culture of caretaking every day within our project teams and the people we're working with. Um, the people on our project team are also people in the world Artists Commit and Galleries Commit, I know came directly out of the lull in 2020 that opened up more space for us to think critically about the world we wanted to return to and how we could contribute to co-creating that. Making sure that our teammates have time to foster connection to self, connection to their communities and connection to their environment helps ensure that more individuals in our communities have the headspace necessary to actively co-create the world that we wanna live in. That means our team is compensated fairly, has reasonable working hours, has access to health care, mental health care, family care, and that we're working in environments that are free of racism, harassment, and other forms of wage or labor or gender inequity. So within our projects, we can strive to create an environment that encourages those connections to self and environment to develop. Um, and that might also mean looking beyond taking action within our direct team and taking action to create more supportive external communities too, and considering all of that as part of climate action. Um, we can't be expecting our teams to show up with creative solutions to the climate crisis on our projects if they're facing more immediate crises when they go home, like racism or poverty or lack of access to safe environments. Um, we're working now to create some pathways for action under this, under support people. But for now, the framework that this takes in the report is to talk about it within your team, um, to frame this as a core component of climate action, uh, to ask your team what they need to feel supported, and to acknowledge and share the things that your team has found successful. Um, Pivlati Risk for their MOCA report uh, worked on a couple of these things. They um, especially try to encourage climate-minded thinking within their project team, create spaces free of racism, and prioritize working with BIPOC, them identified, um, and LGBTQ plus owned businesses and individuals. Uh, what's part of a climate impact report? Collective action. Um, we do a climate impact report and share it with the sector. We include climate action out of acknowledgement that this really has to be framed as a movement that's happening throughout our sector um, and that framing things individualistically or putting too much value on being the first or being the best to do something um, or the leader in climate action can actually be more harmful than framing something that says that I'm participating in a movement in a community that welcomes and requires the particip participation of others in the sector. Um, for this, then again, our framework in um, the our framework for the climate impact report, in addition to our immediate pathway for action, which is to do the climate impact report, 
climate impact report and share it at artistcommit.com. Uh, we have a few other ideas for action here. You can share what was learned in the report to audiences in other ways outside of the Artist Commit platform. Um, you can ask project partners and collaborators about their climate policies. Um, I know that for Annika Yee's project that actually led to some of her production partners to create their own climate policies for the first time that are now um, defining all of the other projects they do in their future. Uh, you can learn from what other projects have done. You can look at the existing reports. Um, you can connect with other institutions and ask them for advice. Um, you can acknowledge the way that you're building on the legacy of their action in your report. Um, talk about each other and talk to each other to create the sense of community movement. Um, you can reach out to other organizations or local networks that are doing this kind of work. Um, you can propose others do a report at the same time as you, so that similarly to the way this kind of pilot group did it in the fall where we were, were all able to support each other, um, invite other artists or other institutions to do something with you and create kind of climate impact report subgroups that can all work together to solve problems and um, build solutions together. Um, a couple of other ideas there that you can also find on the website in the, temp in the template. Uh, but one of those ideas was to reach out to other organizations that are doing this kind of work. And so I wanted to share a couple of resources um, of organizations that are doing that. Uh, Art and Climate Action, based in California, they have been doing some great work working, especially with institutions um, in the Bay Area to do carbon audits. Um, I know they'd be super excited to partner with people to do more of those. Arts Witch has a great international network of people working in sustainability um, that can make a lot of great connections for you. Art to Zero is a New York City based organization that has also been working with um, mostly New York, but also national organizations to create climate action plans and understand carbon. Art to Acres is a land conservation organization for the art world um, that I've mentioned a couple of times in this report because they can do some great work to support um, understanding carbon emissions and then also direct having ideas for where to direct strategic climate funds that might come out of that carbon ca calculation. The Gallery Climate Coalition, this is the organization that I shared the carbon calculator about. They also have a fantastic 10-step um, decarbonization plan and a great host of resources on their website. And Key Culture, um, which is a nonprofit organization that promotes sustainability through culture. Um, they focus on cultural heritage. They have a great program called Key Futures right now um, that you can sign up to be a member of and you'll have a team that supports you throughout kind of every step of learning how to become more sustainable. All of these organizations are part of the Visual Arts Pact, which Galleries Commit and Artists Commit are also a member of. We're all aligned on uh, missions and goals. And so we can really work together to build a climate impact report while also partnering with all the resources that they provide. Um, and then I will also say that for all of the reports done so far, the teams involved, so the people you'll hear from tonight and the people, um, other people who worked with them, have committed to being available to mentor or advise others that are interested in doing reports. So if you want to do one and you have a question about how someone else addressed a certain category, um, or if you just want more of a mentor or support system in the process, you can identify who worked on the reports, mostly in the credits on the, each of these pages. It will say the climate impact report was prepared by so-and-so. Um, reach out directly, ask them questions, ask for advice. I think they would be super excited to feel like the work they did is having a resonance and an impact and be happy to support others. Um, you can also contact us directly at artistcommit at gmail.com um, and we can either support you directly or connect you with the right people. If you are working on a climate impact report, um, let us know. Send us an email at artistcommit at gmail.com. Once you're done with that report, feel free to send it to us and share it with us so that we can help get it out there and other people can learn from the work that you've done. Um, that is, I think, the end of my presentation. I hope you haven't all fallen asleep and that you're still with me because now we're going to hear about what it's like to actually do a climate impact report by some of the artists who have done them. Um, so I am going to start with Allison Janae Hamilton um, so that you can talk about your exhibition at Marian Bosky. Okay, thank you, Laura. Um, hey, everybody. It's really nice to be with y'all. Um, I am Allison Janae Hamilton. I am here in New York City, which is the territory of the Lenape. I'm also going to be chatting with you a little bit about my hometown region, which is in northern Florida, just over the Georgia border, and that's the land of the Appalachian and Muskogee. And um, I say that um, because both locations are really important um, 
to my work and the way that I work, um, particularly the exhibition that I'm going to um, talk to y'all about tonight. So my exhibition was a solo presentation at uh, my gallery, which is Marianne Boski, also here in New York City. Um, the show was open during March and April 2021. Uh, which means I worked on it during the pandemic. Um, the Well, we're still in it, of course, but during the first leg, season one of the pandemic. And I say that because I, I was home. I, I went, um, I usually um, bounce back and forth a little bit between New York City and, and Northern Florida, but I spent that whole um, really large chunk of time down in Florida. And so um, in terms of our climate report, uh, that means that a lot shifted in, in terms of what I thought was gonna be the emphasis. Um, shipping, things like that ended up being much more of a focus and an element that I thought um, here in New York City, my studio is literally right around the corner from the gallery. So I didn't think that was gonna be much of an impact, but it was. And so um, that has prompted me to think um, more regionally in terms of when and where I'm working and how that might impact future future reports. Um, like Laura mentioned, uh, we did the exhibition kind of early on in this um, kind of process and the formation of this coalition. The gallery really just, and, and I just kind of collaborated from the beginning um, on this as kind of a, um, an experiment. The gallery has been really committed um, they have like a climate committee and it has really been committed to, to, to the issue for a while. And so my exhibition was the first um, climate conscious uh, show there. And so we worked with the gallery um, climate coalition calculator to um, record everything from flights, shipping, uh, materials, orders, um, things of that nature. So what we did was implemented a system where, you know, for each work sold, there was a climate um, contribution based on um, our calculator. And so as a studio going forward, there was a lot that we learned specific to my work, specific to some of the nuances uh, and uh, of our studio practice. And so I would say to any artists who are out there who are interested in doing um, these reports, which I hope is everyone here, I would, I would say to really think about the way you work and any particulars or any nuances that are part of your specific um, practice. For example, um, some of our vendors, this is something that we are kind of going to, in this next kind of quarter, think about as a studio. Some of our vendors already, our materials, um, already do a, like a climate um, offset. So how to calculate something that's already had kind of one layer of an offset. Um, and that's um, specific to some of the people that we work with. Um, so how how to rep, how to best represent that, how to do the math on that. Um, so those are that's one of the things that we're kind of bringing back into our own kind of studio huddle as we've done this first project with the gallery. But we'd like to continue this, of course, you know, working with other types of institutions, museums, what have you. So we have to kind of implement some things that are going to um, be able to be sustainable going forward based on our practice. Another thing, um, um, you know, my work really um, is focused on uh, environmental issues in my home region in the rural American South. And so I would really like to partner with um, some fantastic organizations also locally down there in the South who are doing some really fantastic climate-based work. And I think that that could be um, a way to kind of bridge some of what I'm doing in New York City to, to my home region. I think there's a lot of on the ground kind of grassroots work that's being done that I would want to um, tap into because that's the region where I'm you know, spending so much time and, and exploring conceptually and in terms of the materials as well. Um, and you know, another thing that was kind of interesting in terms of being at home during the first part of the pandemic rather than in New York City was just particulars of, you know, for example, my studio in, in Florida is a work from home space. So it's kind of like this um, kind of garage studio space, whereas here it's a normal kind of regular studio. So how does that, you know, come into play regarding um, 
um, building, you know, if, if we want to like really get into the nitty gritty of um, thinking about building emissions and things like that. I mean, when I'm in Florida, it's literally like a hot garage with the door open and like a fan. So it's like, it's very different from um, my setup in New York City. So how to account for the different types of working, very different types of workspaces um, from when I'm kind of in a more rural area versus when I'm here in the city. Um, and the last thing that I just kind of wanted to note um, about that was just also, you know, and this is a question, I don't know if other artists might have, uh, you know, similar questions, but, you know, are there, are there any particularities or nuances when, when approaching, um, let's say a gallery or some other kind of institution uh, or excuse me, a museum or some other type of institution versus working with your own gallery, things like that. Are there any, um, you know, when we draft kind of a, a report or a proposal of how we would like to work in this way, are there any specifics that we should think about based on the type of partnering institution or partners that we would be working with for, whatever exhibition or project or installation. Um, I also work in a lot of different media, outdoor installations or indoor kind of traditional exhibitions. So we're also kind of wondering about um, just the types of presentations and if there's anything that we need to delineate or separate when we approach institutions and, and, and say, hey, this is, you know, this, these types of reports, this is, you know, our first model. Um, how would we translate that to maybe an outdoor or, or a different type of, of, of a project? So all that is to say, I think, you know, really looking at your own practice, looking at the types of um, the types of projects you have coming up, which, you know, what is sustainable for you long term, what makes sense in, the, in your next quarter, in your next 12 months, um, and, and what is doable. And, and you know, also just not, I, I think it's, it's also important to say not feeling the pressure to do everything Right at right now, the first you know your first project, like you know, s s for me, I think stair stepping it is also good because it kind of to me really builds that infrastructure of your studio practice um, rather than kind of throwing everything into one project. I think building and building and then you know kind of a goal quarter by quarter or however you want to think about your year, I think is really good, a good way to kind of um, bring in one part of the practice, bring in another part of the practice um, and really solidify that and really get that going in a, in a concretized kind of way, I think um, feels important. At least at least that's the type of conversations we're having um, at the studio. So um, if anyone wants to reach out or has any questions um, about the show that we did or anything else going forward, I'm happy happy uh, to chat more. And it's it's really good to see everybody. It's to see so many people, people here uh, for this really important issue, so. Um, thank you, Allison. I'm back. Um, Haley Mellon from the MOCA Environmental Council, who is also a painter based in California, was going to talk about the Purple Lottie Wrist exhibition. Um, since she ended up unfortunately being sick, I'm gonna share the report and give a couple of notes that she shared with us. Um, so this report was actually initiated not by the artist, but by the museum. Um, they had already created the Environmental Council and they had broader existing initiatives that the Environmental Council was working on. Um, so this became part of other things that they were doing. Uh, it was deeply collaborative. And I think one of the interesting things about this report is just to um, highlight and maybe in response to something Allison said, some of the people that had to work on it or that got to work on it. Um, the carbon emissions metrics were prepared by Meredith Gray, who's their director of registration and collections and Jill Davis, a senior director of exhibition and collections. Um, the waste metrics were prepared by Patrick Weber, the MOCA's and operations director. The climate impact report itself, it was like written and compiled um, by Haley Mellon, who is part of the MOCA Environmental Council. It was then audited by Simone Paz, who is their sustainability consultant. Um, and then after all of that, it was reviewed by Hauser and Worth, the gallery, as well as Pipilati Rest Studio directly. Uh, MOCA had already created the Environmental Council and they already had started making commitments to climate action, but during the report was the first time they had actually been asked to sit down and make a climate policy. Um, it also led the artist studio, Pipilati Rift Studio, to create their very first climate policy. One of the most impactful areas of the report um, that they shared was actually the waste report. Um, they say that this really helped them engage in waste and better practices. Um, and the entire report will be a framework that they use for future exhibitions. 
Um, however, for the next climate impact report they do, one thing that they might do different, um, oh, they would make sure to distribute the climate impact report form at the very outset of the project. Um, something that will help all team members align with the active goals in a common shared location, like a shared document. Um, and help them report throughout the process instead of at the end having to retroactively go back and do some of this work. Um, I Maybe that was interesting seeing what the report looks like on the website and some of these great install shots. Um, I'm going to pass off to Robin F. Williams, who is a Brooklyn-based painter and one of the fellow founding members of Artist Commit. Hi, thank you, Laura. Um, as you mentioned, I am based in Brooklyn, which is traditional territory of the Canarsie people. And uh, I thought I'd use this time to walk through step by step how I approached um, my gallery, PPOW, to create a climate impact report for my last exhibition. Um, so first, I told PPOW that I'd signed the gallery submit document. Um, and I asked if they would do that as well. And thankfully, they did. They were happy to. Um, then through some outreach and word of mouth, uh, other gallery workers and several artists at BPOW had also already signed the commitment. Um, so next I reached out to those other artists and we discussed together how to approach the gallery about creating our own climate, uh, about creating their own uh, climate action plan. So uh, then I drafted an email from all of us to one of the owners and some of the staff at PPOW asking if they would take this next step. Um, and since we had all asked them together, we sort of had each other's support and no one had to approach the gallery alone. And um, I think this is a good strategy if as an individual, you're feeling maybe less empowered uh, to ask your gallery for more climate action. Um, coalition building with other artists and workers can get you the support you need either to ask your gallery to sign the commitment initially or to further engage their commitment after they've signed. Um, so next I walked through the format for a climate action plan on the gallery gallery's commit website with one of the owners. Um, and then the gallery got right to work drafting their plan and they published it on the gallery's commit climate action database, which Laura walked us through. It's an incredible resource. Um, so at this point, PPOW was sort of fully on board and it wasn't hard to ask them to work with me uh, in putting together a climate impact report for my own exhibition. Th at this point, it actually led me to put together my own uh, studio climate policy, which is a step I had yet to take. So even my ask uh, of the gallery wound up holding me accountable as well. Um, so basically it was a step-by-step -step process that made the next action easier to take for me and easier for the gallery um, to further engage their commitment. And now we have the framework in place for future projects and we're already sort of thinking about how we're gonna apply what we've learned to the next uh, things we work on together. So looking back, um, I might do a few things differently. I wish I had organized a little bit more with the other artists to get us all together, um, either at the gallery or over Zoom uh, for our initial conversation about PPOW's climate action plan. Um, we maybe could have had more of a community building experience, which I think is a really important part of all of this. Um, for efficiency sake and just some uh, pandemic reasons, I opted for like a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the gallery. Uh, but in my case, I already had some established relationships with the other artists at PPOW who had signed. Um, so we sort of had a bit of a sense of community already. But if you're thinking about um, making a climate impact report or taking any of these climate actions, um, whether you have friendships with other artists at your gallery or not, I think that artists commit can be just a really powerful point of connection and one way to you know, establish or strengthen those relationships. So if you don't already have a climate coalition at your gallery, you can start by talking to other artists uh, about Artists Commit and showing them how many of us have already signed. We have like a nice substantial growing list of um, really amazing artists from all over the place, not just New York. Um, 
And then you can kind of slowly work your way toward a conversation with your gallery all together um, so that you don't have to do it alone. Um, so that's it for me. Now I'll introduce Deville Cohen, a Brooklyn-based non-disciplinary artist and founding member of Artists Commit. Thank you, Robin. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I'm also calling from Brooklyn, traditionally territory of El Napa in um, Panasi people. The idea to create individual climate epoch report came um, when we started to develop a more universal artist writer for exhibition and studio purposes. We quickly realized that even though we share many similarities and responsibilities, um, still each of our practices was unique and that we can learn much more from creating a more nuanced and more personal reports. For my CIR, for my show End to Mouth and This Suicide at PS122 Gallery last fall, I chose to focus not only on the materialistic aspect of the installation, but also on the collaborative nature of the project and its process. End to Mouth is a new dance company made of human and non-human collaborators, and we reflect on economic struggle as a metaphor for production and survival. We approach our process and also our CIR to examine the interconnection between economic, social, and environmental crisis. Working on this project independently with the support of grant independent nonprofits, it was important to me to be transparent and clear about the various uncertainties and difficulties of financing and labor. This project has shown us once again how much individual, in, invisible and unaccounted labor goes into the creative process of interdisciplinary time based projects. My tip for starting creating your own CIR is to think about what you're already doing. Yes, we are doing many things wrong. And the idea of stopping doing is sometimes the nearest thing to doing something right. But clearly, that's not an option, another reason why we are here. So think about what you're already doing. Where are you already invested, even if it's only on the level of sentiment or intention? When I asked PS122 for their institution climate statement, they also did not have one. As probably in many of the galleries or institutions that you'll be working on yours. So ask them instead, what are they, what would you like to do? What are we planning to do? My biggest takeaway from all this process, surprisingly enough, was at the very end of the process when we calculated the show's carbon emission. We talk about greenhouse gas in a way that it was sometimes abstract to me. And the, and the TCO2E units are calculated in tons. So a 0 0.033 did not sound like much, but it is. 0 0.3 ton is 30 kilograms, which is 66 pounds, which is a lot of carbon. For a minute, I went into the rabbit hole of calculating everything I do into TCO2Es. Every subway ride, every trip upstate, every time I switch on a light, which is not helpful, but at least now I understand what this actually means. The next presentation is from Tate curators Carly Whitefield on the Tate Modern Hyundai Commission by Annika Yee. She's in London right now, it's 2 a.m., so we're gonna have a pre-recorded video. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Carly Whitefield and I work as Assistant Curator of International Art at Tate Modern and I had the great pleasure of working as one of the curators on Annika Yi's Hyundai Commission in Turbine Hall. Carbon impact assessment was really important to the Annika Yi studio and to Laura Lupton, Director of Special Projects at Gladstone Gallery, who together proposed publishing a report to Tate as part of this project. The proposal came roughly two years after Tate undertook a full emissions assessment and declared climate and ecological emergency. So there was certainly alignment in highlighting the importance of examining our processes. But I'd note that for any institution of Tate's size, there's often a question of consistency that might come up. And I'm very glad that it was felt that there's space for teams shaping a project to decide if, where, and how thoughts on climate impact might be included. On Tate's side, the curatorial senior management team, Tate's environment and resources manager, and our press department were all consulted on the report. And I think that we're all very happy to have it to now add to the models that we use for sharing data and decisions and learnings which has taken a number of different forms at Tate, such as wall labels that acknowledge efforts made to reduce carbon. Looking at the data, it's unsurprising that the great majority of the carbon was generated through flights 
And I think had this project not taken place during the COVID-19 pandemic, we all know that figure would have been even higher. But what was more surprising was the number of elements that are just too dependent on offsite energy to be able to calculate. Uh, and in particular to this project, that was external servers. So laying out what could and couldn't be calculated and why became really crucial to the study. And you'll see that in its final form, there's a lot more text than there are figures and there's no total sum that's been shared. In future, I think it's really important to set the scope of the reporting as early as possible in the process so that suppliers and collaborators can agree on a reasonable amount of information to be reported and so that this can be tracked from the get go. I also think that the waste report is really useful matrix for project planning and it allows for agreements on the future lives of materials to be made early on and also in terms of which party makes a purchase with a view to reuse or, or repurposing. I'm really grateful to have had this first experience in impact reporting and thank Artists Commit for this opportunity to share it. All right, so we've got some questions from the chat. Um, let's just jump straight into the first one, which was following your presentation, Laura, and it's from Nicole Cooper. How does Artist Commit feel about purchasing carbon offsets? It's um, perhaps not a great long-term solution. Um, I, so I guess that's for me. I think that um, for us, carbon offset sort of is not necessarily an interesting part to the climate impact report for us when you work with art acres and you do a um, carbon calculation then it has proven to be something that people are coming to us quite often being like oh we want to calculate and then offset an exhibition and have a carbon neutral exhibition um, that energy and that interest is super great and effective and so we've worked to try to create a pathway that we can um, use that energy and leverage it to catalyze for things that we think are super effective. Um, understanding carbon emissions, we think is super, super important. Um, being able to actually calculate things or realize where high emission areas are or lower emission areas are, or how you can um, ad address that is like really useful. So the calculation we think is important. Um, and if that means that your institution or as an artist studio, that once you understand what your carbon emissions are, you're interested in finding ways to protect stored carbon, protecting stored carbon or keeping carbon in the ground is also equally important. Both of these strategies have to be happening um, simultaneously. Um, and one of the things that you can do that we've been working with is large scale land conservation, um, generating kind of strategic climate funds so that once you understand carbon, you can then protect stored carbon, uh, maybe of an equivalent amount or maybe based on just a financial number that you think is fair or that you have access to um, to protect stored carbon. So I guess um, that said, I don't think that we are really pushing offsetting an exhibition as like carbon neutral exhibitions being the goal of a climate impact report. The goal of the climate impact report is to understand your carbon emissions, to reduce those. And if that also um, part of that means that you're protecting stored carbon or keeping stored carbon, preventing carbon from being released, um, that's also great and should be acknowledged and celebrated, but it's not like a one-to-one -one offset that then just makes it okay that you had carbon emissions. Thank you, Laura. Allison, I'm wondering if you want to ask, now that it's a Q&A time, um, about the question you asked during your own presentation, which is, are there, I kind of paraphrase it, are there particularities between partnering with museums versus your own gallery? And is there anything we need to delineate or separate between institutions, indoor versus outdoor, et cetera? Um, if you want to ask that now, again, yeah. you may. I mean, that's the question. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think the, the thing, I think the interesting thing about what we're all doing right now is that it's not, you know, we don't have all the answers right now. This is like a big brainstorm, which I think is 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 fantastic. And so that is one of my big questions because um I work in a lot of different media. And so, you know, we really honed in on um the climate impact report um for the particular style of show that we did, which is kind of a traditional gallery show, a, a mix of photography, sculpture, um, some film. And um, I'm just curious how that would play out um, with other types of venues, other types of 
works, um, installations, what have you. And that's just something that as a studio, we haven't really sat down yet and, and kind of discussed those nuances. There's so many um, kind of um, details and, and that we've kind of gotten conversations going in some aspects, but just those, those you know, how to approach and how to um, talk to, to institutions that might be diverse or institutions that are used to doing one type of work versus another. Is there something in the approach that um, would work, you know, for a, an outdoor sculpture park versus a museum who does a little bit of both or, or what have you? So that's just kind of something that we've been tossing around. Is there something in a proposal that we need to offer um, ahead of time? And those are just kind of things that we've been kind of spitballing um, as a studio um, as we kind of think about our goals. Um, uh, for 2022 in terms of, of our climate impact reports to come. So yeah, anybody? <laughs> um, Deville, I can talk about that for, I guess, Tate and um, Mocha, but maybe you wanna talk about, because you, you approach PS122 directly. Yes, I was already working with them on this project and on the show. So, because the project and the show started before the pandemic and I used the studio, the gallery as a studio during the pandemic. So as our work developed, developing this um, climate impact report, I was already working with them. So I took them step by step as we were developing our approach and our concept of how to do this. And they were very supportive of the project altogether. And therefore, they were also very supportive when I asked them to part, partner with me in creating the, the report. Was it more of like a conversation or was did you have like a formalized kind of proposal, like a written thing, or was it more kind of like a conversation? I'm kind of wondering, am I, I, mean, I think it might be helpful for people too, to um, kind of think about how formalized they they want to get or, you know, it, that might be more, you know, more or less intimidating for people to do it one way or another. I'm kind of curious about like your approach to for, for a larger institution rather than a gallery. I think for me really it was a part also of the content of the project. I think the climate, the ecology, the collaboration, it was already subject matter in the project and I worked with them closely, quarterly on the project. So when this came, it actually was in line with the conversation and sentiments and ideas that we already were working on. So it didn't really require an outside of the path that we were already going to. So I think that was a way that, yeah, I think there was something very organic in my subject matter and the relationship that I established with the institution mm -hmm. parallel to creating the process with an artist community. That makes sense, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I can talk a little bit about um, maybe for the Tate project with Annika Yi. And one thing I'll say about that is I think that the reason, a huge reason why that report even happened was because of COVID-19 and the production of that project was delayed by a year for the opening. So the amount of time that we had to kind of allow this type of conversation to develop had expanded. Um, and also a result of that extended production timeline, the relationships within the project team had become a lot stronger. Like we just knew each other really well. We had gone through a pandemic together. We had seen each other's homes and had a different, I think, level of connection. So it was easy to have conversations emerge outside of that. Um, another reason why I think a part of a climate action plan is supporting your team, like having teams that feel connected to each other um, then are more interested, I think, in having conversations that maybe push these conversations and actions farther. Um, but one strategy that I think made that work with Tate to um, actually create the like follow through on the report was having a lot of flexibility on what was reported and what we focused on and choosing to celebrate and focus on the things that our team did have the capacity to work on and not being overly didactic about like requirements of certain things that you had to hit or figure out um, but really being like we're all doing the best that we can we're figuring this out what can we like pull from the energy and support that the project team has and just like focus on those areas instead of getting too too overly didactic or bogged down on things that are just like we all have a lot going on and there's only so much that we can do on a, any given project 
For um, Pipilati, Roast, and Mocha, it's like a totally different situation. Both Tate and Mocha have existing climate policies. Tate had already made um, pretty major commitments to declaring a climate emergency, I think in 2018, um, and, and Mocha had created their environmental council um, prior to this project. So both of those were also major institutions that had already voiced support for climate action. Um, I think more institutions are doing that and hopefully that this could be a framework that helps usher that in or helps introduce possibilities for collaboration between empathetic artists and empathetic institutions that are curious to explore these types of actions but may not be quite ready to do a full like comprehensive plan. It can be a little playground to test to run how things go and what works and what doesn't. <laughs> I think we should move on to another question. Um, but I know that more of us will be really happy to talk about this with you one on one as much as you want in the future, Allison. And I appreciate you bringing this question. Um, Annabelle Keenan had a question following your presentation, Allison, which was, are there particularity, no wait, that's your question. Um, have any of the climate impact reports focused on art fairs would, and that it would be interesting to see a gallery do a climate impact report on one of their fairs? That's the question. Um, I can speak to this a little bit. We haven't, as far as I know, we haven't done one yet. Um, it's a goal of mine uh, to do that coming up in the future. And I've already sort of um, started to talk to my gallery about um, a plan for um, Freeze Soul. Um, and because we've already done uh, the climate impact report for my last exhibition, um, we're like the beginning of the process of this booth um, comes with like that intention. So um, the subject matter of the work, uh, the application um, and the, the execution of the booth are all gonna kind of have this uh, in mind. And hopefully we can start a little bit of a dialogue at the fair. We're hoping we can get the fair to um, participate in some programming around this, but uh, we still have to get into the fair, so <laughs> that's uh, that's the first step. But I have a personal intention to um, go in that direction, and I think there, I would love to um, sort of apply all of the climate actions that we've been doing in this group and point them towards art fairs. It's that was sort of one of my initial impulses to. Um, be involved in activism in the art world. But um, at this point, we're kind of we've been doing some really important laying some groundwork and hopefully uh, someday we can <laughs> uh, really start to make systematic change at art fairs. That's um, definitely part of my personal goal in this work. Thank you, Robin. I think we have time for one more question, which is great because we have two more questions and um, Davide is very excited to answer one of them in the breakout rooms. So um, this one comes in from Jessica Julius and Zoe Schweiger. Have we worked with any universities on climate action or a climate audit? And if we, and would we? Just, do you want to answer that one? Me? We have not. Am I right? Yeah, we, we would. We would do these with anybody. We will do these with anybody. Anyone who wants to think about the climate and supporting people and making this a better world for longer, we will work with you. That's what I would say. Which brings us to the end of our um, 
isolated Q&A time. However, if you feel like you have not had enough time with one, at least one of these artists who has shared with us, we have some breakout rooms where unfortunately we cannot share any, oh wait, no, Davide, you have things to say, don't you? I have plenty of things to say, but the time is, I mean, we're pretty uh, like over, over time. Um, I don't know, we have the possibility of doing breakout rooms. I don't know if that's something we should, or you guys are interested in doing. And when I say you guys, I'm talking about the audience here. I think like uh, speakers here would be welcome to uh, have a one-on-one -on -one with you if you're interested. Um, I don't know, I can, um, I, I can close. I don't know what's what's the what's the take on the situation. We we are past our time, but how is everyone feeling? Everyone is so excited they can't contain themselves. I think you should say your uh, many questions, your many thank yous. Say your many thank yous. I have many many thank yous. I have many people to thank. I mean, first. All the, all the people who have attended today. It was so great to see so many uh, people. We had, uh, we had some good questions. I think also the, the report and you'll see on the, on the templates is, addresses a lot of them. If you just go back and, and, and look at them and just scroll through, I think it will answer a lot of integration, integrations. And especially for the, the ones I think that was one that kept coming was how flexible the reports are and how you can adapt it to, uh, which we, we mentioned here, but I, I think that was also like a very, uh, a very interesting uh, point and, and reminder that we we constantly evolving, we're all constantly learning. Uh, I think like there was also a question about the digital space, which I have not addressed so so much, but I think that's something extremely uh, interesting. I'd be also happy to to talk more about that on the breaking breaking room if uh, somebody's interested, especially like yeah, NFTs and blockchain and energy uh, consumption and calculations, very complicated question. Uh, but let's thank everybody and we can just like let everyone go. Uh, thanking so all the audience, mem uh, audience, mem audience member, uh, the speakers today, Laura, Allison, a special thought also for Haley who couldn't be with us uh, today for uh, uh, health uh, reasons. I hope you feel better, maybe uh, you attended. Uh, Robin, thank you, Deville, and uh, Carly, who was also in London, not uh, able to attend live uh, for their presentation. And also, like, the, like, I think we can really thank them for leading with the example and making the, those climate impact reports and uh, making them public. I think that's also something when you can, with more time, revisit on the website. I think that's, that's pretty interesting to read like, through, uh, through them in details. Uh, and, I think we can uh, also like continue signing, talk to your friends, artists, galleries, art world people to join in the, the we say pledge, but the commitment. Go on our website, use the use the tools. Uh, we have committed to evaluate our impact, like doing diagnostics and reading, um, analyzing and speaking up. So making ourselves uh, known like today, I think like also, I mean, you now know our faces, but also like it was great to see uh, many faces of other uh, members and partners and other organizations that joined um, that joined us. was it's pretty heartwarming. It's great. Um, who else I'm missing? There's probably a lot of the of the people. I think um, Jessica, of course. Thank you uh, for hosting with me. Uh, thank you, yeah, for the partners. Uh, there are too many uh, here to list, but uh, you'll see also in the resource page. I think, like uh, again, I insist on that on that page on the website. It's extremely uh, useful. Uh, share that page with as many people as you can want. Uh, yeah, sign up to the newsletter. Uh, follow us on Instagram. Let us know if you have a climate report, uh, climate impact report in mind you want to do, interested in doing, or already doing. Share with us. Uh, we hear to help, we can assign you somebody again or try to answer uh, and help along the way. Um, breaking room, no breakout room, drinks, coffee, tea, dinner, fries, 
I think we can call it. If anyone has like a specific question for any of us on the call um, and you want to stick around for a couple of minutes, we're happy to answer them. But if it's late, go, go to sleep, rest up, and wake up tomorrow and do a climate impact report. Sounds good. Thank you, everybody.